Hey guys, welcome to another Trade Genius Podcast. Bob and Phil here as always. Yesterday we talked about Walgreens. Now we're going to talk about the larger problem and that is what's going on in the economy. We've been telling you it's coming. We've got the proof. Let's dive in. Trade Genius. Hey everybody, it's Bob with Trade Genius. Usually I do fun ads, I talk about our service, but I wanna be serious with you for a second. We've been helping a lot of people trading for a long time. As you can see here, I wanna let them do the talking for me for a change. But most importantly, we wanna help you too. If you've not joined our service yet, come check us out, tradelikeagenius.com. Full service, you know, we have chat room, we have the algorithms for you, we give trades out every day, we educate you. So go to tradelikeagenius.com, check us out. What you get out of our service, is much, much more than what you put into it. And we'd like to see you in the room. Thanks for listening. Okay, Bob, we've got some pretty compelling data here to basically tell us that enjoy the ride while it lasts. But if you don't have your eight point harness ready to go, you're going to be in for a very, very bumpy ride. Yeah, you better have an airbag from, from uh, Judge Dredd to be able to save you here. <laughs> look, you, Zoomers, you look it up. Boomers, you should know what I'm talking about. So the chart I want to show you here is they always talk about wages are increasing. We're doing a great job. We're going to pace through this inflation. It's all good. Uh, I'm here to disabuse you of that notion. Remember, compensation includes benefit costs that you have to absorb. Remember when healthcare was a benefit? Now it's a drag on your income. And total compensation has now fallen for the last three years. It is negative. We are negative compensation. So let's say you got a 10% increase over the last three years. You know, you, you probably got a 16% increase in your proportion of the healthcare cost as it relates to your compensation. So you didn't get anywhere. And also taxes are up too. So, you know, withholdings have probably gone up. That's just on the wage side of it. And with that, Phil, that's money you don't have to spend, I don't, you know. And what they do, they've been conjuring it up through higher credit card spending. Well, that's coming to an end now too. And so we're at this point of basically Muhammad met the mountain and a rock fell on his head. And so there's no easy way out of this. You just have to stop spending. And we're starting to see what it, what's that doing to the economy. I'm going to throw it over to you because you have really cool chart up showing about recession probabilities, even though I think you already know our answer, but I'll let Phil show you the data. Well, you know, there's still people that doubt we're going to see a recession too, you know, and they look at things like unemployment's still okay and things like that. And true at the moment, that is the case, but you really have to start looking at the numbers, looking at the graphs and knowing that what they're telling us now is implying that something worse is coming. So I think we're going to have stagflation initially, Bob, and that's the worst of all worlds. And then what we'll end up having is further drop off. We really haven't seen the consumer completely choke off and drop off yet. And that's typically what we're going to see as we get through the economic malaise that we're starting to rotate into. So when it does happen and everybody acts like deer in the headlights, if you're looking at all the data, you know, this has been brewing for the better part of about 18 months. And the only reason why we're not in a recession yet is because Yellen was able to pump with all of the T-bill issuance, right? And as you really, that's a driver of GDP, right? As they do all of these monetary stimulus things, that actually expands GDP. Even though they're issuing debt, it might sound counterintuitive, but it actually expands GDP. So all of that stuff bleeds out into the economy, but uh, it has a short shelf life because it's unsustainable in terms of paying the interest on that debt. So you can't continue to do those short-term pumps, but they're going to do that into the election as much as possible. But to get to the other chart, so you see a problem with wages and inflation and then on top of that, we have the probability of a recession in 2024. Now, uh, this graph is showing you in terms of percentage probabilities that we're heading for a recession. We have a very large spike there on the right. And these types of readings, especially the rate of change, it always precedes a recession, which is marked off in gray. So again, when you talk about the large macroeconomic indicators that we chart, like unemployment rate, personal interest payments, and things of that nature, it's the rate of change that's very telling. If they grind up slowly, that's a little different issue. But when you have a, a quick spike, a relatively quick spike uh, compared to the rest of the graph, that's usually telling you that we've got a, an economic situation that's 
coming to us or at least is slowing rather quickly and that's typically what you see the behavioral pattern uh, going into a recession and plus the readings here are, are extremely high we haven't seen readings like this since the 70s and the early 80s even the great financial crisis and also the dot-com bubble did not have probabilities such as this and that's because it's based on the inversion of the yield curve right the two-year and the 10-year we've just not seen it this negative and this negative for this long right so we're almost there i would say we're probably you know yeah you could push it out to q4 when they throw in the towel and call it a recession but it's coming and i think we're seeing everything that we've warned everybody about bob i think we've seen one by one them falling into place and uh, it's going to continue to do so and we're going to enjoy the last of this rally in the summer into the election maybe we'll have depending on what happens at the election maybe we'll have one final push up whether that's a new high or just a lower high remains to be seen but then going into december and january i just don't see it i really don't see see a, a further push beyond that and I think that's 2025 is really when reality sets in for all of this data that we've been expressing to folks here yeah and look and and, and I'm a broken record on this too is that you know if you isolate inflation out of the numbers we're in a recession now it's just mm -hmm. that it's the game they play it's the mirage they give you just like the, the mirage they give you for employment as well and what's really interesting today we don't really don't get too much into politics but I thought it was interesting that after the debate the Trump numbers pop and the market like that so that could be that one of the other impetuses Phil for the let's rally the market here and then after the election I think reality sets sin. You know, for those who love Trump, if he gets in, he has a tough road to hoe. And for those who love Biden, his policies have been not economically, I guess, attractive. And they're just going to get worse in a second term because basically the gloves will come off. So either way, you know, we're not bullish at all in 25 and 26. I think the only thing Phil and I are probably arguing back and forth on amicably, I may add, is that when do we really dump? Does it start dumping in September or do we wait for after the election? But either way, we're going to be prepared and we're going to be exiting stage left or we're going to be doing these hedge pair trades that make us not really care. And we'll be talking more about those in the coming weeks because they may be a lifesaver for all of us. And with that, Phil, you guys have a great weekend. Thank you, Phil, for everything. And we'll catch you guys on Monday. Short week, next week, 4th of July, Thursday, markets closed. Probably everybody's going to be on vacation. So volume below, market will be moving around based on that. Trade Genius.